and Meg is joining us with sports this weekend and they couldn't keep the streak going but the oil kings are keeping it alive yeah well you can hardly blame them for having only one loss in 24 games they led the Moose Jaw Warriors 3-1 in the series heading into game five last night where they pulled out a 4-1 victory in convincing fashion years ago they came into the Western Hockey League and now they're going to the WHL final The next foe they face is the Portland Winterhawks, who swept Tri-City in the Western Final. The Kings know they've accomplished a lot, but not enough yet. I wouldn't say we're satisfied, but uh, we're definitely proud of this moment. Uh, we're going to soak it in for a bit, and then we're back to work uh, this week. And the Oil Kings may have the inside edge on Portland. Turns out bench boss Derek Laxdahl is a Winterhawk alumni and even won a Memorial Cup with them in 83. I was only 16. There were a lot of stars <laughs> in that team. I did a lot of bench watching, so. <laughs> Kenny Remchek, uh, John Corda, Cam Neely, Randy Heath, uh, Mike Vernon was our goaltender, so we had some pretty good players. One player on his way to superstardom is 19-year-old D-man Martin Gurnat, who had two goals last night, including the game winner. There's a shot. Score! And he may not be your prototypical goal, goal scorer, but he planned out his celebration for the occasion. It's like my favorite celebrate, so I'm happy I scored two goals. Guys really helped me there on power play. That was just for, for fun. I don't know what to do is. And while one player was planning out their celebration, the captain was warned not to celebrate too much. He said, no, no, I don't want it. He, he, he looked over at his teammates. He might have even looked at his coach. The feeling I got from the guys, everybody came over me and said, don't you dare touch that. So I couldn't, couldn't do it. So this is how the final will play out in the best of seven series. Edmonton hosts the first two starting next Thursday at Rexall. The next two will be in Portland, and any game needed after that will rotate between the two. Game seven, if necessary, will be played on home ice. Over to the NHL playoffs, Eastern Conference semifinals, Capitals and Rangers. It's the third time in the last four years these two have met up in the postseason. Skip ahead to the second. A scoreless game, Alexander Semin shoots, and he rips it off the crossbar. The iron saves Henrik Lundqvist. Seven left in the middle frame. Our team and Nisimov behind the net and wraps around for a goaltender's nightmare. Rangers open the scoring on Lloyd Minster product. Braden Holtby, 10 seconds to go. Brooks like streaking up ice. He hits Jason Chimera with a beauty of a pass. He squeezes it through on Lundqvist. Tie game after two. Third period, Rangers jump on the big rebound and go back the other way. Rookie Chris Kreider blasts the slap shot and it goes past 2-1. 11 to play. Mike Richards beats Holtby on the short side. Rangers take a 3-1 lead and a 1-0 series lead. Only one other game on the sked tonight. Kings visiting the Blues. We are tied at 1 in the second period. We will have full highlights at 11.30. Over to the Midget AAA National Championships. Leduc hosting the TELUS Cup. The Red Deer Rebels facing the Saskatoon Contacts in the semi-final. Pick it up in the third. Rebels leading one zip. Work Cartier with a break, but he can't solve Jason Sedora. Contacts still looking for that equalizer. Josh Ulrich with a couple whacks at it in front, but Sedora stays sharp. Rebs looking for the two-goal lead. Logan Fisher and Nick Blacken with pressure in front. But Max Shields shuts them out, still 1-0. And just over a minute left in the game, Joel Topping tosses it on net. And Scott Ferguson with a beauty of a tip. Rebs go up 2-0 and manage to hold off Saskatoon. Sedora gets the shutout as Red Deer moves into the finals tomorrow afternoon. And they will be facing the winner of the Leduc-Quebec game, which is in progress. They are tied at one in the first intermission. And over at the Esso Cup, the Edmonton Thunder took home bronze with a 4-1 win over Halifax Metro. This is the third medal the girls have brought home in the last four years. Pembina Valley is the 2012 Midget AAA National Champions, defeating Thunder Bay 4-2. The Edmonton Rush finish off their regular season tonight against the Toronto Rock. Despite already owning a playoff berth, the Rush aren't taking this one lightly. Well, we have some goals tonight. We, we have an opportunity to finish with the best goals against in the league uh, uh, if we keep Toronto to a number tonight. Um, and again, an opportunity to get better for next week. Game time from Rexall is 7 and will be broadcast on TSN 2 and everybody had their game faces on at practice. A special promo shoot is sure to get some more female lacrosse fans out tonight. Captain Jimmy Quinlan has his thoughts about the extracurricular activities. Oh, what do you think of the photo shoot? It's just interesting. 
interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't call my name, so I'm, I'm doing all right. Well, that one stopped Sonia dead in her tracks. Third round of the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. Weyburn, Saskatchewan's Graham Dillette on the par four tenth. He's never finished higher than third in a PGA event. His second shot gets a friendly roll towards the cup, sets him up for an easy bird. Par four sixteenth. Dillette one shot back. Another one of his seven birdies on the day. His six under 66 puts him two shots back of Jason Duffner entering Sunday. Milos Raonic in the semis at the Barcelona Open facing David Ferrer. First set went to a tie break and it was all Ferrer. Nice cross court forehand that Raonic can't get to. Ferrer takes the first set. Another tie break in the second. Milos down 6 4 and on the ropes. Blast the forehand winner past Ferrer, saving the first match point. Down 6 5, still alive in the match. They exchange passing shots. Ferrer hits the backhand down the line, advancing to the final where he will face world number two, Rafael Nadal. And time for your Olympic alert. Peng Peng Lee of Richmond Hill, Ontario finished first in the uneven bars event at the Zito Challenge Cup in Croatia. Also, Jason Burnett of Nobleton, Ontario qualified for London 2012 after winning the Canadian Trampoline Olympic selection event in Gatineau, Quebec. And Alexander Amond of Laval, Quebec in blue won gold after defeating Aisley Gonzalez of Cuba in the 90 kilogram division at the Pan American Judo Championships in Montreal, securing his playoff berth. Playoff, rather, Olympic berth. And Zalika Zupanzik of Whitby, Ontario, also in blue, tied for third after beating Vanessa Chala of Ecuador. The win earns Zupanzik valuable ranking points towards an Olympic berth in the women's 70 kilogram division. And just to be fair, I wasn't caught dead in my tracks, but I did ca capture my attention when Not I looked a bad to shot. the We've got to give our props to Chad out there, <laughs> shooting some fine stuff for us today. Yes. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>